This is impromptu at 55 beats per minute. This is impromptu at 72 beats per minute. <laughs> So this next part, I'm going to explain the three things that I did while I was practicing this, which helped me get my fingers in the right spot, know what I'm doing. And before I do that, disclaimer, I have a sad face when I play. I promise I wasn't sad. I promise I wasn't scared. And you shouldn't be sad or scared either. If you just do a little bit at a time, especially these next three practice tips, you're going to be fine for October. You can do this just a little bit at a time every single day. Okay, so the three things, there's harmonics, there's a bunch of accidentals and weird fingers, and then the dynamics. So starting with the harmonics, I want you to see some exercises that I did. So get ready to take a screenshot, um, and then I'll talk you through the steps. Okay, here's my copy of the music. Ignore the coffee stains. There's three main harmonic sections. There's what I call the red, the green, and the orange. For each of these sections, I've circled Woo, woo. The note before the main harmonic and the note after. So before, after, before, after. The red and the orange are closely related and these first three exercises will help prepare you for both of those. Eh, I don't know about that. Anyway, and then the green, here's the exercises that you should do to prepare for that one. So go ahead and take a screenshot of these six exercises and I'll explain them in a second. Okay, exercise number one has a Roman numeral three underneath it, which means go to third position. So my first finger is not gonna live on first tape. It's not gonna live on second tape. It's gonna live on the third tape. Third position, first finger's on third tape. Third tape on A is D. So the, number, the numbers underneath the letters, D, E, F sharp, G, 
one, two, three, four. I'm telling you which fingers to use, okay? And in third position. Starts with D. D, E, F sharp, G. And there's a little rooftop symbol over F sharp to G, meaning F sharp and G are a half step, meaning they touch. Three to four, they should be really squishy. And then you leave your thumb over here still, lift your other fingers and pivot, pivot like in basketball, haha. <laughs> Pivot to get harmonic A. Okay? So once again, that first part is one, two, three, half step, harmonic. Okay, now going forward, I've got a bracket around D, E, F sharp, which in my brain means don't make noise for that. Set your D down, set your E down, set your F sharp down, and then play G. That whole exercise without me talking sounds like this. where second finger E is and where harmonic A is. And you need both of those things for step two. Step two is to play E, second finger. Harmonic A, back to two. Lots of times. Until you can find both of those lots of times. Um, step three, this one only really helps you with the first harmonic section, what I was calling the red one because the orange one doesn't have the E harmonic. It just has a chord. So what's happening in step three is you're playing second finger E all the way down, touching the fingerboard, harmonic A, fourth finger, back to second finger, but this time it's a harmonic, and you can see the giant space between my second finger. Okay, so it's E, A, E, really high. Should sound like this. Let's see if I can get it. I need new strings, it's kind of flat. Anyway, um, the lighter you press on the string, the better it's gonna sound. Okay, so if you hear this sound, you're pressing too hard. There's also, if you're a little bit too far forward, a little bit too far back, you'll get other weird noises like this. Which I think is what happened when I played it at 55 beats per minute. Anyway, I would practice E, A, A so many times, like once a day, that should be in your practice, those three notes, okay? When you can do that, then you should go back to the red harmonic section and put it back into context. So play E, C, shift, and that's that section. The orange section at the end is very similar. But you go back to first position, Set what is called a barred finger, where your first finger is in between two strings. It's in between G and D to play A and E. And use one finger and pluck three chords. What in the world? Pluck three notes to get a chord. <laughs> okay, so then uh, for the green harmonic section, you still need the harmonic A, but now you need a D sharp. So um, number four says the same as number one, but with D sharp. So you'll find D, and now change that to D sharp, and then play everything else the same. It'll sound like this. And then you'll play D sharp, harmonic, D sharp. And then, if you see those Roman numerals, they popped up again, you're gonna go D sharp, harmonic, and then shift back to first position, get first finger A on the G string. That's exercise six. Okay, so the next thing, the accidentals, you might notice in, my, in the screenshot you took of my picture, um, I went through and marked every single second finger with either an up or a down arrow. So if it was a high two, I put an up arrow. If it was a low two, I put a down arrow. If I were you, I would go through and mark every single accidental in this piece with either an up or a down. That way you know for sure that it's a high two, that it's a low one. That way you don't have to guess what it is, okay? Um, there's one specific spot in measure, it's the end of measure seven to the beginning of measure eight. It's a third finger C on the G string to a low three B natural on the G string. So what that looks like, is you've got C, third finger, 
and it wants you to play B. So you're gonna take that C and move it back to where that second finger just was. So you've got C, B, C, B, same finger, C, B. And then um, it's because they want you to use your second finger to play F, a low two on the D string right after that. So you've got C, B, F, and you use B to find F. You squish F right up next to it. Sounds like this in really slow motion. C, B, F, three, two. Okay, I would practice C, B, F a bunch of times and make sure that your F is right behind the B, okay? Another thing about the finger placements on the fingerboard, there's a couple places where there are um, brackets or beams, marked, whatever you want to call them, tunnel fingers. These dudes right here, one, kind of blurry, two, three. Those are the only three marked in the entire piece. What those mean is that it wants you to take your finger Take one finger and put it in between two strings. So like in the very first measure, there's a, a bracket above the second finger E on the C string and second finger B on the G string. It's saying put your second finger in between those two strings and don't move it. So that way you can get E, B with one finger and your finger doesn't have to move. If I were you, I would go through and mark other places where you could have beams. And you know what? I will do that and you can take a screenshot again. Here I go. Okay, take another screenshot of this. While I was marking the brackets, I found three more that needed to be marked. Here's one with your second finger in between G and C string. Here's another, same exact thing, second finger G and C. Here's the other, same exact thing. And then I also found another one here that I for some reason didn't see a second ago. But look, it's second finger between your D string and your A string. So to practice those beamed fingers, what I would do is play whatever comes right before it and then the two beamed fingers at the same time. So for example, the first six notes of the entire piece, I play the first four notes and then I put my second finger down in between E and B and I like right in the middle and then I play both at the exact same time to make sure it's in the right spot. I would go through and find every single little beam in this entire piece and practice it just like that, where it's the first few notes before the beam, play the beam at the same time to make sure that, that your finger's ready, and then break it up, so play it exactly as it's written. But what that does is it helps you prepare that, that finger where it's supposed to go in between the strings instead of doing da 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 ba ba. It doesn't want you to do that. Da 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 da. Now here's the thing. It's gonna sound the exact same if you don't do the, the beamed finger where you keep your finger down. It'll sound the same if you do the little hop. It just might save you a little bit of time and energy and it might be a little bit more in tune if you just put your finger down and keep it there. That's the point of that. Okay, now the last thing about this um, that was hard for me was the dynamics. And like I said before, I'm a color person. So when I was in high school, one of my choir teachers recommended if a dynamic was confusing me, go get some colors and mark like the louds red or pink and then mark the softs blue. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but eh, I'll show you like an example of what this could look like. Can I flip my, now nah, I'll show you. So see I've marked my mezzo forte pink, my crescendo pink, de crescendo blue, and then my piano blue. And I would go through and find all of the things that mean loud or get louder and put pink, and all that mean things that mean soft or get softer and mark them blue. And it's just a physical reminder, physical by like, I mean, you're taking something and marking it, um, of when it's supposed to be loud and when it's supposed to be soft. And if you get those dynamics, you will impress the judges so much, just so you know. Okay, one more thing. Take a picture of my word key and then go through the music and make sure you totally understand where all of these words are and what they are telling you to do you got this you guys good luck